Hello everyone. So I hope you like this beautiful painting of a cow just behind me. So welcome to my home. So what we're going to talk about in this video is uh, an application of the uh, definite integration process, which is to calculate the area between curves. Now it's a relatively straightforward application, but uh, later on in this course we'll study uh, how to calculate surface of more complicated or area of more complicated surfaces and also volume of solids of revolution. And the techniques we'll use are very similar to what we'll study today. So it's a good idea to make sure you understand this case very uh, precisely so that then you can go on and understand the more complicated cases better. All right, so what we're interested in is to find the area of a region bounded by two functions, say y equals f of x and g of x, between and between two vertical lines x equals a and x equals b. So in my little picture here, we're interested in the area which I'm just shading in blue right now. Okay, so there's one way that you can calculate that right away just by... Uh, using what we already know about Riemann sums. So if I now look at this particular area, which I'm shading in orange, from the definition of our definite integrals, so let me call that a1, we know that a1 is going to be equal to the integral from a to b of the function f of x dx. Recall from week two that the definite integral of the function calculates the area under the curve here. And also, let me choose a different color. If I now shade this particular region, then I know again by definition that this region that I call a2 is also going to be given by an integral, but now of the function g of x dx. And now just looking at the geometric picture, you see right away that the, the area I'm interested in, the blue area here, it should just be given by a1, the orange area minus a2. And in terms of definite integral, this is the integral from a to b of f of x dx minus the integral from a to b of g of x dx. And using properties of definite integral, I can rewrite that as a simple, that is a single definite integral, where I just replace my function by the difference of the two functions. All right, so this is one way to calculate the error. But now let me do it again, but in a slightly more conceptual way, and we'll see that we get the exact same result. Okay, so I'm back at the same picture, and I want to calculate this area here. So what I'll do now is exactly the same thing as we did in, in week one, which is that, uh, in, in uh, week two, I guess, which is that to calculate the area here, we're gonna slice it into small rectangles, just like we did when we calculated Riemann sums. So I'm gonna draw a little rectangle here. I'm only gonna draw one of them, but remember that there's a bunch of them you can draw. And then the idea is to calculate the area of this rectangle, and then you just sum the area of all rectangles and let the number of rectangles go to infinity to get a precise calculation of the area. So the width of this rectangle here, which I write as delta x, we remember from the week two is just gonna be equal to b minus a, so the difference or the length of the interval here over the number of rectangles. And the height of my rectangle here is gonna be different from what we saw in week two, because now it's given by the upper point minus the lower point, so this is going to be f of xi minus g of xi, where now xi is the point here, so remember that xi was given by starting at a and adding i times steps of width delta x. And now to calculate the area, what I want to do, so let me call the area a again, is take the limit as the number of rectangles go to infinity of the sum of the area of each rectangles. So the area of each rectangle is the width times the height. This case is delta x times f of xi minus of g of xi. All right, and then from the definition of definite integrals, we realize that this is actually just a definite integral, which is really the same thing as we had on the previous slide. So this is why this uh, Definite integrals can really calculate the area which is between the curves here. Now, okay, writing down this whole thing is a little bit annoying. So we can, what we usually do is streamline the process a little bit. So let me start again, but now do it a little quicker. So instead of writing the full Riemann sum, what I'll do is the following. So I'll draw a single rectangle like I did. And I'll say this is a typical rectangle, meaning that I'm just choosing an arbitrary rectangle here in my slicing choose my point to be x here. So I'm gonna call the width here to be equal just to dx. The d here is to remind us that we're gonna send this to be very, very small width. And then the height here 
is again going to be the difference between the functions, but then I'm just taking f of x minus g of x because I'm taking my point to be just the point x. Now I can calculate the area of a single rectangle. I write that as dA, meaning this is the area of a single rectangle, and this is just the width times the height, so it's again f of x minus g of x dx. And then the total area is going to be the sum of these areas, but sum here should be understood as an integral, really, because I'm summing, but then also taking the number of rectangles to go to infinity. So the area is the integral from a to b of the area of each rectangle, which is really the integral a to b of f of x minus g of x of dx, which is again the same result. So this point of view here is just a kind of streamlined way of writing the Riemann sums without really writing the Riemann sums. So we just define a single typical rectangle, find its width, its height, its area, then sum over all of them to get the expression for the total area between the curves. Okay, so um, let me just give you an example here, which is slightly more subtle. Suppose I ask you to find the area between uh, these two curves. One of them is a line, so this is this line here in blue. And the other one is a curve x squared plus 2, which is the, the curve here, which is in purple. And I want you to find the area between the point x equals 0 and x equals 6. So if I look at the picture, this is really this area, which I'm shading in blue right now. And now you have to be careful, because if you look at the area on this side of the intersection point, so by the way, the intersection point is uh, as coordinates 3 and 11 here, so you can find that pretty uh, easily just by finding the intersection point between two curves here. All right, but if I look at the area on the left side of the interval here, I see that the line is actually higher than the x squared plus 2 curve, so the height will be given by taking the line minus the uh, x squared plus 2 curve, while on this side it will be the inverse thing. So I really have to consider these two areas independently. So I'll call this one a1 and this one a2, and then I'm going to try to calculate these areas independently, then add them up to get the result. So for a1, this is my typical rectangle. So let's start with a1 here. So my typical rectangle has width dx and height given by taking this line minus the parabola. So dA1 is going to be equal to the width, which is dx, times 2x plus 1 minus x squared plus 2, right, which is something like dx times uh, minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. And then I could calculate the full area a1 here, so the area between these two points here, by integrating from 0 to 3. 3 is the x-coordinate of the point of intersection here of this area, so minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. Now, we'll let you do this integration. Uh, I just want to set it up here, but you can actually integrate that and calculate what is the exact value of the area a1. And now we can do the exact same thing for a2, but now we have to be careful because the area of each of the typical rectangles here and the a2 side of the point of intersection will be different. So how is it going to be different? Well, the width is still dx, but the height is different because now I start with the function x squared plus 2 and I subtract dx plus 5, 2x plus 5. So I get x squared plus, x squared plus 2 minus 2x plus 5 for the height of each rectangle. So if I simplify, I'll get x squared minus 2x minus 3. And then again, to get a2, I want to integrate or sum over the areas of each of these rectangles. So I integrate now from the point of intersection to the endpoint, from 3 to 6 of this. And again, I'll let you do the calculation. And then finally, the total area is given by adding up these two area a1 and a2. Right, so the, the subtle point in this case is that we could not treat the whole interval at once. We actually had to separate it or split it into two subintervals. And the point is that we split it in subintervals such that on each subinterval, either f of x or g of x is strictly greater or equal than the other one. So in this case, we can on each subinterval, we can just calculate the area in a simple way, and then we just add the areas together to get the total area of the region. 
Okay, so I can summarize all of that in the following. So how do we find the area bounded by two curves, y equals f of x and y equals g of x, and two vertical lines, x equals a and x equals b? Well, first, if you have a more complicated case like the previous one, what you want to do is split your interval into some intervals over which either the function f of x is greater or equal than g of x, or g of x is greater or equal than f of x. Either way, it doesn't matter, but you want to split into some intervals such that this is well defined. Now, over each sum interval where f of x is greater or equal than g of x, then you can calculate the area by integrating the area of a typical rectangle, which will be the height times the width. And now the height is given by f of x minus g of x, because f of x is the upper point. Right. And then over the each sum interval where the inverse is true, then you can also calculate the area by integrating, but now you're integrating g of x minus f of x, since, since g of x gives you the upper point for the rectangles. And finally, you add up the areas to get the total area of the region. Now, there's a fancier way of packaging what I just said instead of having these four steps. If you realize that, in fact, the absolute value of f of x and minus g of x is defined in terms of two cases. It's either equal to f of x minus g of x if f of x is greater or equal than g of x, or is equal to g of x minus f of x if g of x is greater or equal to f of x. And now if you think about it, what we're doing in these four steps is really just integrating the absolute value of the difference of the functions. Right, so you can write in full generality that the area bounded by two curves and two vertical lines is given by this expression here, integral from a to b of the absolute value of the difference of the functions. And uh, that doesn't matter now, you don't have to split anything anymore. This expression is valid for any interval where you can integrate the functions. All right, but in practice, this is beautiful. This is a neat way of packaging what you're doing. But in practice, if you want to evaluate this integral, what you need to do is do exactly go back to the four steps. So to evaluate the integral of the absolute value, in the end, what you have to do is split your interval to subintervals, and, and such that over each subinterval, the absolute value is equal to either this or this. So in practice, you always have to go through these four steps and re-split the integration into subintervals.